I arrived at liquor training because of this guy here, the Dark Bay horse. Um, I was doing a certain amount of natural horsemanship and I had done a fair bit of work with that. I'd done some of the Pirelli stuff and up to level two. And I was looking really for an alternative way of working with horses that was gentler than some of the methods I had seen. What I found with him was if I increased the pressure at all in the way that many of those techniques use, he absolutely froze and didn't like it. We made good progress nonetheless until it came to the point of backing him and putting a saddle on him. And I started and I had a saddle which I put on and I tied the girth on him and I stepped back and he took off and he bucked for the best part of an hour, bronco style. And so I went back to starting him again, but using the clicker. And I now have a horse that I can walk up to with the saddle in my hand. He stands quietly, I put the saddle on him. He um, will walk with me to be mounted, stand while I get on him perfectly calmly. We can use clicker training to play games with the horses and have a lot of fun with them. Um, why would you play games? Serious horse people will sort of maybe frown. But one of the things that allows you to do is to develop your skills with something that really doesn't matter. This guy, I want him to do dressage in a while. It's not really important that he's able to fetch in order for him to be able to do dressage. But if you can learn the skills with something where it doesn't really matter, then it's much easier to, do, to use it for the stuff where it does matter. So you're just developing your skills. So if you want to uh, ask your horse to do nice lateral work, and if you're looking for a particular movement and the horse gives you the start of that movement, you can click and treat that. So the horse says, I was clicked and treated for something, what mm -hmm. was it? And they will attempt to repeat that again and repeat it and improve on. So you, you click and treat each attempt mm -hmm. until you get one step, two step, right. six steps, ten steps. So when steps. we start, we always work behind protective contact. Here with Rua today, we're simply going to use a lunge line and he's going to stand in behind. So when you're preparing for your first session with a horse, it's, it's good to be well set up for it. The first thing we use is a pouch or another container. You can use your pockets. I use my jacket pockets, anything you like. But when you're starting with a horse, it's always good to start with small chunks of food. The reason for this is if you start with something like horse nuts, they might nibble at your fingers to get at the last few. And a horse that's well educated in clicker training will take the nuts really nicely off your hand. But at the beginning, they're sometimes quite eager and over enthusiastic. So if you've just one clear, clean piece of food to give them, then that makes life much easier. So when you're presenting your food, you're always going to present it on an open hand and flat. The other rule is you present the food. I want you to pretend to be a horse for just one moment. This is your head and this is your neck. I'm going to present the food to you so that I'm at a full arm extension. Again, this is when you start with a horse that knows nothing. They focus on the food and they suddenly go food, 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 food. And you want to be in a position where you're working at a distance from the horse so they cannot monk you. It's a very good idea to work with human horse to start with. You present the target, the horse touches, click at the same time. The click is marking the behaviour, it's saying, yes, that's what I want. You then want to put the target and the clicker out of sight while you reach in and present the click, where the horse can get it nicely. I'm going to be the horse. Always good to practice, practice yeah. 
with a human. You're going to present the target to me in a position where I can almost not avoid. And as I do, <laughs> this is why you practice with the yeah. humans. They have much more patience. <laughs> and now you put the target down, reach in, and give me the food. And that's absolutely perfect. Okay. So I don't need to prepare having food in my hand? No. no. It's not a good idea to have food yeah. in your hand. The horse will recognise quickly that you have to go for the food. And as they become more aware of the clicker and its function, they'll develop more patience in waiting for the food. Yeah. You start by making it really simple, yeah. where you can touch it, because you set yourself the horse up for success all the time. You're all asking a question, can you touch this here? Yes, can you touch it here? But then you can start to move it around. Left, right, up, down, and make it more difficult. What's important is when you've finished a session with the horse that you give them a very clear signal that you're finished. So I usually use maybe my hands empty and say all gone and walk away. So you make your increments nice and small and each time it's like you're asking a question. So when I went back to say putting the saddle I started with say can I rub you all over with the cloth? Yes, click and treat. Can I put a numna onto your back where the mm -hmm. saddle would be. Yes, click and treat. Can I put a saddle over nice. the numna? Yes, click and treat. Mm -hmm. Can I now let the girth down the far side? So right. stepwise, stepwise, stepwise. You can use targeting to get your horse used to all sorts of scary objects, even things like plastic bags. But, and you can also use it to lead your horse, so you can have them follow the object. What you find normally is that the learning can happen very, very quickly with clicker training. Particularly if you have a horse who has experience of clicker training. They know that you're going to reward them and they know that uh, you're looking for a little bit more all the time. So they are start to look themselves to find the right answer. Targeting is a whole range. It's the very first thing we teach our horses. You can also ask your horse to target an object, such as a mat, and teach them to stay there. One of the things that you find with clicker-trained horses, they love to work, they're very eager and enthusiastic, and when you come out and you have more than one horse, you kind of get this, pick me, pick me, pick me. They get great fun out of it. And the thing about it is to remember to use it in a fun way. You can make any kind of training become fun right. with the clicker because you're using positive reinforcement all the time. Click and treat doesn't have to mean food and a lot of people once they move to riding just use a scratch on the withers. But food is very reinforcing. Because the food is associated with the click only, what you find is that very quickly your horse gets to the point where he realises there will be no food unless the click comes first. So I can walk around with my pockets full of horse nuts and know that I will be safe. Once you start clicker training, the rule is for every click you give a treat. Okay. But you never give a treat without the click. Right. One of the second behaviours we teach is to ask the horse to lower the head and this is because it's a very calming effect on horses. Horses are at their most relaxed when they're grazing. If you can ask your horse to lower its head in, in a panic situation, it actually shuts off the adrenaline and allows them to calm down. And when they've relaxed, you can ask them to come up again and ask them to come down. So that even if my horse is upset at a distance, I can still ask him to calm himself down. And he can stay down. 